hello and welcome. In this video, we will create the UV maps for our object and prepare it for baking. Baking means to project all the small details of the high poly onto the low poly object. By doing this, we have in the end an object that looks like to be in high resolution but really only has very few polygons. We begin with the cutting and naming the object. The point of doing this is to separate unassociated phases that are too close to one another. If these objects here were to be connected for example and we would execute a normal bake, we would have strange artifacts from the opposite side. Since we already have created new objects for the single parts when modeling, this object is cut relatively well already. When I want to separate a part, I go into edit mode, select all parts I want to separate, press P for the separate menu and choose selection. By doing that, a new separate object from our selection is created. I leave it at that however, since I like the segmentation it is at the moment. I begin with the naming and start with the high poly. I naming all the parts canister and number them all the way through. It is also important that every object gets the suffix underscore high. We apply the exact same naming with the low poly, but here all objects get the ending underscore low. Now we have to scale the object to the right size. To illustrate this, I have imported a character that has the size of 1.75 meters. We use it as a reference to scale our canister. If we wanted to be very accurate, we could search for the correct measurements of such a canister on the internet. In this case, I just scaled this canister with a sense of proportion. Now I activate both layers. With Shift plus C, I set the cursor to the center, switch into wireframe mode and set the orientation of the pivot point to 3D cursor. With box selection, I select high and low poly, go to the front view and switch off the background image. Now I can scale the canister to the approximate size. Then I set the pivot point orientation back to bounding box. When we now have a look at the scale factor, we see that the value is 0.04. This is the factor that I have just scaled the canister with. Factor 1 are 100%. This means that the canister has only 4% of its original size. This original size always has to be a factor 1, otherwise serious errors occur during the import into the engine. To declare this 0.04 as 100%, I press Ctrl plus A for the Apply menu and choose Rotation and Scale, thus making the current scaling and rotation the new origin. The scale, as we can see here, is now 1 again. But as we can see, the object is totally broken now. This is because of the bevel modifier. It is still set to the old size of the object and therefore much too big. To fix this, we set the width of the bevel to a much smaller value. Now we start with the UV mapping. It is very important to think beforehand which resolution the texture of our object will have. In order to do this, a so-called texel is specified at the beginning of the development of a game. It defines how many pixels of a texture are applied to a certain object size. 
our texel for environment objects is 1024 by 1024 pixels on 3 meters. For smaller objects like this one here, we use a texture atlas, a big texture with up to 20 objects on it. In our case, a texture atlas has the size of 6 by 6 meters and therefore a resolution of 2048 by 2048 pixels. That's why I now create a plane which has the size of 6 by 6 meters. On it, I create a color grid texture and call it Texel. As resolution, I choose twice as much of that which has been planned for our texture, so 4096 by 4096 pixels. This is just our working resolution and serves the purpose to get a much more clean up bake so that we are able to work in more detail. During the export to the engine, the texture is being recalculated to 2048 pixel again. I unwrap the face, create a new material and position the texture on it. When I activate the mode texture in the viewport shading, I can see the texture now. I now select the low poly and lastly with press shift key the plane. With ctrl plus L and a click on materials, I now link the material of the plane on all objects of our canister. For the moment I set the plane to invisible, we need it later again. Now I select the first part of the canister and with the key forward slash on the numpad I switch to the local view. Now only the selected object is displayed. I switch to edit mode. The goal of UV unwrapping is to project the three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional texture. In order to do this, we place seams where the object is being cut open. To define the seams, I select the according edges, press Ctrl plus E for the edge menu and select mark seam. Now the respective edges are shown in red. To conclude the whole thing, I select the whole mesh, press U and unwrap. Since I still have the mirror modifier activated, I only have to do this for one side. I now repeat this on all other parts of the canister. In the right panel, I go to the tab Mesh Display and check off Sharp. Now the blue edges are not shown any longer since they cover the red ones when they are exactly on top of each other. If it is possible, UV seams should be in places where there are also sharps. In this case I want to have UV seams almost everywhere where sharps are. To do this I select one of these blue edges, press Shift plus G and select Sharpness. Now all sharp edges are selected and I can assign UV seams to them.
When all UV seams are finished, I apply the mirror modifier for the objects if there is one. The now created UV maps were only used as a preview and are now deleted from all objects again. The placed seams are preserved of course. Now I select all low poly objects, go to the render tab and open the tab texture atlas right at the bottom. If this tab doesn't exist in your case, you have to activate it first under user preferences and add-ons. Now I create a new texture atlas with the resolution of 4096 pixels. Now I activate the button Start Manual Unwrap. As you can see, all our objects are now being assembled to one object. In the edit mode, I press U again and select unwrap. Now all of our objects are unwrapped at the same time. I go to the UV editor with the mouse, press F6 and set 0.04 for the margin. I switch back to the object mode and make the plane visible again with Alt plus H. In the UV editor, I now use the add-on Text Tools. This add-on isn't included in Blender by default, but it can be downloaded for free. Under UV Layout, we look for the section Textel. It is important that the scale of the plane is set to 1 as well. As we can see here, this isn't the case. That's why I press Ctrl plus A and select Scale. Now I click on this little pipette to determine the texel of the face. Afterwards I select the canister and press apply in the text tool. As a result the texel of the face is transferred on our canister. For this it is important that the entire canister is selected in the edit mode. Now I can shift the UV to the desired position in the edit mode. As you can see, the canister takes up very little space on our 6x6 meter atlas, so that a lot of other objects can be put here as well. When I'm finished with the UV, I go back to the object mode and then press Finish Manual Unwrap in the Texture Atlas add-on. As you can see, the original condition is being restored. We have all our single objects with the right name. I make the plane invisible again with H. Now I export the whole thing for Substance Painter. I select all parts of the low poly, click File, Export, FBX. I activate selected objects, create a new folder, name it with can underscore low and press Export FBX. I repeat everything for the high poly only that I name it with can underscore high this time. In the next video, we will bring all objects in Substance Painter and texture them there. See you then!